Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing something a little bit different for me. Basically, I was on YouTube, fall was kind of approaching in the Northern Hemisphere, and I was looking for fall themed videos and Halloween themed videos, Samhain themed decks, you know, trying to get all of those vibes in. And I realised that most of the videos that were coming up I had already seen. <laughs> they were from last year, the year before. Now I appreciate I'm a tiny bit early. It depends whether you feel more that fall starts in September or whether you feel like it's specifically when the autumn equinox happens. But either way, I figured I'd been getting my decks together that kind of feel like fall or they feel like Halloween to me. And whilst I've got them, why not share them with everyone? Something I want to note is that whilst I enjoy bringing in the seasonal themes with my decks, I will just use all my decks all year through. It isn't a hard and fast rule for me, but I do tend to find myself kind of regularly more drawn to the ones that feel like the season to me, that maybe represent what I'm seeing in the earth around me and the changes that come with the season. And then as and when I'm drawn to other decks, I use the other decks as well. There are also some decks that simply don't feel like they represent a particular season. And because I didn't want this video to take forever, with that being in mind, I have chosen the ones that feel most obvious to me. So as I say, it doesn't mean that I don't use them at other points during the year. And some of them are very clearly themed at things like Halloween and others aren't. Maybe it's just the coloration and bits and pieces like that. But really it was just a fun, here's some decks that I'm going to be using through fall and through Samhain and through Halloween. And also if you want to get a kind of idea what my themed readings might encompass what decks might come up this is a time for you to have a little peek i don't want to chit chat any more than that let's just jump straight into the decks first up is tarot of the hidden realm and there's really no rhyme or reason as to why but during the fall months especially i feel really really drawn to fey energy I notice it in the spring as well, but there's something about fall in particular. And I'm really excited to have this deck this year because I knew that I would want to use it in fall. Not just for the fey energy, but also you can see it's got quite a lot of earthy coloration to it. It's not overly saturated. It just feels like coming back to earth magic as well as fey energy. And so, for that reason, this has to be one of my fall decks for sure. Keeping in line with that Fae energy, this is the Fairies Oracle. And as you can imagine, this works beautifully with Tower of the Hidden Realm. It's also got that kind of old scroll, full coloured theme to the edges of it. Despite the Fae being various different colours, as you can see, we've got a lot of blue coming through, some sketchy ones. But again, it's something that in these months I feel particularly drawn to, and I like to have that element of cheekiness. I can imagine them crunching through the leaves and flicking the last berries off of the off of the bushes outside and playing with the animals as they build their shelters and prepare for winter and it really just gives me that kind of vibe. This is one that does tend to get used all year through but it especially feels fun for fall. Because I didn't want to have one without the other, this is by the same person, so Brian Froud and this is his other deck, Heart of Fairy, Heart of Fairies Oracle I believe. And you can see it's the same artist, so there's a lot of similar vibes with this one. I actually feel like this one's probably got more earthy colours in it. 
but I tend to use them both as and when I can because they feel like they've got quite a bit of different energy. This one feels a little bit cheekier to me and the other one maybe a little bit deeper but they both cross over and that's just my personal preference. Here's the Robert Downey Jr card. <laughs> my partner can't see it, I think it's um, it's pretty uncanny actually. But there you go. Moving on we've got the Wooden Tarot. And so you can see the kind of theme. I look for the warm and the earthier kind of visuals and vibes when it starts coming into September months. And look, it just lends itself so well. This is another deck that, of course, I use all year round. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but there's something about it that I know when it hits full, the same as last year, that it is definitely coming out. And I like how the, the simplicity of it starts to almost signify what happens in fall you know the the loss of the blossoms a lot of trees lose their leaves eventually as they change color and maybe you know as long as they're not evergreen that's the time of their process where they go back to basics before they rejuvenate and this deck kind of feels like that to me you know going back to bare bones the final few leaves before winter. So it's quite a fun one to use. And you can see immediately that this is clearly by the same artist. This is the Earthbound Oracle. And it gives me much of the same vibes. Naturally they work beautifully together. I really enjoy using these with Tower of the Hidden Realm as well. Um, and the fairies, I think all of the decks that I've shown you so far all cross over and vibe really well in terms of the earthy colours and the themes that run through the deck. And here's a great one to represent what I was talking about. So again, this, this little one comes straight out when it hits full. Now the next two decks I'm going to show you, I did um and ah about adding them and then I realised that whilst they don't feel as solely full and autumnal based decks, they do still come out maybe a little bit more frequently at this time of the year, just based on the artwork, the earthy tones in this one. So this is the Wildwood Tarot. And it does lend itself really well to this time of year, for me personally. Again, these aren't necessarily going to vibe with everyone, but it's just a fun... This is a lot of what I'm going to be using in between my million animal tarots. And it's nice to show you actually quite a few decks that maybe aren't animal based. Um, because I know I use a lot of them and... It's fun to see what else people use. So you can see, it really does actually go through the seasons. The book takes you through the seasons. It's very focused on it. But there's just something about Will Worthington's use of the orangey, reddy hues that come. Um, some of the sunsets. And bits and pieces like that where when it hits full I just want to get my earth on and get those kind of decks out. And this final one is Shame and Wisdom cards. And I actually do use this all year through. The only rhyme or reason that I've pulled this is, and it sounds silly, but it's really, as you can see, orangey brown coloured. Again, it feels very earthy to me in that kind of fresh earth underneath the grass. And because it complements various other decks in its coloration, it does get a lot of extra use in full. And it's just something to break up everything else that I've shown you, something a little different. This is kind of, 
it replaces some of my other go-to decks. So for example, I use this and say Lavish Earth Crystal Affirmation deck all year through. But in full, I'd be more inclined to this one. Whereas in... Because this has got crystals and herbs and other things. They're not in any way, shape or form the same deck. But visually, I might be more inclined to this and with its vibes. Whereas Lavish Earth... I may be more inclined to that in kind of the summer months. So I just thought I would chuck this one in for fun. And we can now move on to some of the darker, more Halloween-y feeling decks. First up we've got Raven's Prophecy. This probably isn't going to surprise anyone. It's a little bit on the nose because, in honesty, where it's got the whole orange and black coloration throughout that's often what makes most people feel like it's a halloweeny vibe deck since reading the raven's prophecy the first two books i've not read the second two yet so no spoilers i still feel like this is a darker deck even more so than i did already there's a lot of psychological depth to those books and you know, this deck has a lot of fire in it and deep, dark, hidden messages and feelings and emotions. And so not only does it look great for Halloween because of the colours, it really does work well for that part of things for me. And so this continues to be one that I get out, especially at this time of year, for both of those reasons. I do like to do a lot of the emotional and psychologically deep and evocative readings with this deck I think that it works so much better than it gets given credit for but as always it's often down to personal taste and whether people are gelling with the artwork but for me this is an absolutely great deck through and through very very loved and especially fun for this time of the year Next up is Deviant Moon Tarot and it just looks right. <laughs> I feel like whilst this isn't a Halloween deck, it has a lot of those, I feel cheekier, playfully dark vibes. And it has things that are maybe a little bit more obscure that people might think are more dressed up or darker than the rest of the year as you can see it consistently holds these earth tones quite dark um it does give me a trick or treat vibe but i think that's because i find it quite cheeky as well um as i say and i've said many times this deck doesn't bother me in the capacity that some people have found it but again, it's all personal preference. It does the deep stuff really, really well. But I can equally get a really fun, cheeky reading out of this. And I'm definitely thinking about trying to create something for Halloween around this deck that's maybe a bit more playful. Just a cheap reading for people if they fancy it. But this one, for me again, lends itself well to the darker months of the year. This is the Santa Muerte Tarot. And again, I think it's kind of a given, especially moving into November. Because November is the celebration of Dias de los Muertos, um, which is the Day of the Dead. That's the 2nd of November. Um, if I'm getting it right, and I'm really sorry if I butchered the pronunciation. That is when that occurs. And if you don't know who Santa Muerte is, then I encourage you to go and look her up. I am very aware of being respectful around this deck and the traditions and the deity and things like that that are attached to it. Oh, and of course, I always leave my title cards in, but is that not the most beautiful title card ever? But yes, this deck is definitely going to see use this fall, and it will definitely be used in November as well. 
This is Oracle of the Shapeshifters and whilst if I had Le Vampire then I would be using that one as well. This does still kind of give me the full themed vibes. It has a magical kind of feel to it. There are some that look a little bit more Halloween-y. Perfect example. This is my favourite card. And so I have done readings using this as the oracle alongside more obviously themed tarot decks, especially for Halloween. And it's often worked really, really well. The messages are always quite deep and quite poignant anyway. And I like adding the fantasy element. Really, it's also the only more animal based one that I've got that I use for the themed readings at this time of year. Aside from the wooden tarot and obviously the earthbound oracle, but they're not as focused on the animal energy, whereas naturally this shapeshifters one is. On to the last two decks. This is Tarot of Vampires. I am so excited to have this this year. I still really, really need the book. Um, but I was gifted this a while back now by a friend because they had a spare copy, which was really awesome of them. And of course, who doesn't love sexy vampires? At Halloween. <laughs> Many a Halloween have I been a vampire when I take my brother out trick-or-treating and the older one when he was younger. So this is gonna be fab, absolutely fab to have this year. It does just have that illustrious kind of visual vibes going on and that, as I say, dark sexy energy that can be a part of Halloween, depending on your type of Halloween, of course. So, loving, loving the vampire vibes. And last, but certainly not least, I feel like maybe I've saved one of the best till last, is the Halloween Oracle. You will see this about a lot in the coming months. I use this all year through. There are only a few cards that are very, very obviously only referenced in Halloween, like Trick or Treat or the Jack-O-Lantern. But even then, there's so much meaning to be read into them. And we've got this winter card as well. But of course, it is perfect for fall. It is perfect for Halloween. It's got that great spooky vibe. It actually goes really well this has reminded me, but not because of this card, but it does go really well with the Santa Muerte Tarot. There's a lot of skulls in this deck, as you can see, and they do, they visually, they vibe really well together. This is a deck that goes with a lot of other decks, actually, and I often will pull myself a card and leave it out on the altar. But... This is the final deck, you guys. So that's it from me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I hope it was just a fun, quick little look and maybe gave you some ideas because a lot of these decks, nearly all of these decks are still available to get on Amazon. And more than that, they're usually owned by people already. So hopefully you've got some of these that you can use if you're feeling like you want to draw on the season or draw on a certain uh, holiday or time of year. There are other ones that are on my wish list. <laughs> As you can see, I don't have the Halloween tarot and oh my gosh, that is the cutest thing in the world. It is on my wish list. Um, I'm trying to think of other decks that are very obviously themed that way as I say Le Vampire which is by Lucy Cavendish and Jasmine Beckett Griffith that would go awesome with the Vampire Tarot deck there is a lot of gothic themed decks and dark fairy tale decks out there to be had and as you can see I've got I've got enough to satisfy me but if I got some extra cash there are a few that are on my radar 
I'd love to know if you do what I do and you do focus a bit on the seasons or the holidays. As I say, it's not hard and fast. I do use other decks. My Wild Unknown will get used throughout the year. My medicine cards, various other decks. But if you also like to do this, and I'd love to know, I'd love to hear what decks you feel like fit the fall months or Halloween vibes, spooky vibes. And other than that, I will catch you guys soon. See you later.